Okay, this is introductory nuclear physics course for uh, both undergraduate students and graduate students. And uh, today's uh, uh, talk is about the nuclear models. Uh, I will continue this uh, discussion on nuclear models in the next lecture also. Very briefly, let me recapture what I'm going to talk today. It is about uh, the binding energy first, and then I will go through the liquid drop model, uh, the semi-empirical formula derived by Bede uh, and Weizsäcker, and various terms of this formula will be elaborated. And then uh, we will do one or two example uh, on this. And uh, finally, we will cover the achievements and the failures of the liquid drop model. So here we go. As you know, the binding energy per nucleon uh, is basically for a given nucleus, an average energy found by dividing its total binding energy to the number of nucleons that it contains. And the total binding energy, for example, uh, for uh, deuterium uh, is uh, 2.2 MeV divided by two, and it comes to be 1.1 uh, million electron volts per nucleon. Similarly, binding energy for uh, bismuth is uh, about 7.8 MeV nu per nucleon. And uh, we know that it's uh, A number is uh, 207, uh, 209. The greater the binding energy uh, per nucleon, the more stable is the nucleus because uh, you have to give this much energy to break the uh, nucleus. So stable nucleus will need much higher uh, energy to, to break. If you look at the binding energy curve, it is, uh, it is really uh, showing a large value, uh, more than eight uh, uh, for iron, and iron is the most stable uh, element and the binding energy per nucleon in, is, is almost at its peak. It decreases as we go further in the mass number, and uh, we have the masses larger than uh, 200. We see the, the, the decrease as compared to the iron values. And similarly, we see a decrease, a sharp decrease for the smaller elements where the fusion uh, becomes uh, important and the binding energy is low enough to allow this, that the things should fuse together to increase the mass number for which the binding energy is high. Similarly, the elements must break into the smaller pieces when their masses are large enough uh, and uh, with the low binding energy, then they can get converted into the higher uh, binding energy values, uh, the elements having higher values and they become stable. So nature is dictating the fission and the fusion process through this uh, binding energy uh, maxima. It was uh, George Gamow with uh, Weizsäcker in 1935 <clears throat> that they recognized through some experimental evidences and found that the nucleus resembles with a liquid drop. Then further, it was developed by Neil Bohr and John Wheeler. <clears throat> so liquid drop model is a popular model for the nucleus. The model in the nuclear physics treats nucleus as a drop of incompressible nuclear fluid of very high density. The density is extremely high. The density stands for the fact that it is mass per unit volume. So we are talking about the density of the nucleus. The nucleus is very, very small, small volume, and very, very uh, large mass. <clears throat> like uh, molecules in the uh, drop of liquid, the nucleus has nucleons that are interacting strongly with each other. Like uh, liquid molecules, nucleons can collide with each other, and then they can uh, be 
uh, in thermal agitation. Nucleons collide frequently and therefore nucleons uh, within the nuclear interior, uh, they have their mean free path less than that of the nuclear radius. So within the nuclear radius, they keep on um, colliding with each other. Liquid drop is incompressible. It means that the density cannot be changed very much. The liquid drop is spherical uh, because of the surface tension. And uh, similarly, nucleus is also spherical uh, because of the strong nuclear force, which keeps it bounded and in a rounded shape. In a liquid drop, the cohesive force always saturates. Here, the nuclear force also saturates. And we can see that the binding energy of the nucleus is proportional to the number of nucleons. Uh, it, it, it larger the number, the larger will be the binding energy. So let's uh, now get ready for the model. Uh, the by the Weizsäcker's uh, semi-empirical formula in abbreviation S E M F is uh, for the model, and this uh, delivers basically an equation which is an attempt to predict the binding energy of the nucleus in terms of the number of protons and number of neutrons that are there within the nucleus. There are five factors that contribute to the binding energy of the nuclei, and uh, the first is the volume energy term. When you have an assembly of, uh, of uh, spheres of a similar size or same size that are packed into a smaller volume, then each interior of the sphere has 12 other spheres that become in contact with the uh, sphere. So this volume energy term uh, shows uh, that uh, the nucleons only interact with its uh, nearest neighbors and the, the, they are bounded by a specific uh, binding energy value. So the dominant attractive term will, will be having a positive sign. Each nucleon has a binding energy that binds it to the nucleus. So if you consider the U uh, subscript V as the binding energy per unit volume uh, of the nucleus, then the total energy will be uh, basically given by <clears throat> this uh, term, where 4 divided by 3 times pi R naught cube. R naught is the the radius of the of the sphere, uh, the fundamental radius, and the A is the uh, atomic uh, mass. Uh, so you, if you recall, the radius of the sphere of uh, of uh, nucleus uh, R uh, can be written as R naught times A to the power one over three. So this volume term, the energy term, is actually a constant and then proportionality uh, is with the A, the number of nucleons. Here we can see the R0 is constant, the U is constant, the rest of the terms are constant. A is the uh, atomic mass uh, number and it is proportional. So the volume uh, term is proportional to A. The surface energy after the volume term, which is directly proportional to A, is, is uh, here we have, uh, we can see that uh, that uh, how many uh, neighboring are interacting with, uh, with, the, with the one nucleon. <clears throat> and uh, there are other two dimensions um, uh, where it is interacting. So let's talk about the surface energy. This term is a basically correction to the first volume term. The nucleons that are on the surface of the nucleus have the fewer neighbors as compared to the 12 neighbors. And some neighbors uh, will be 
actually within the nucleus, but the at the surface there are no uh, neighbors available. So the surface uh, nucleons will have the less interactions, and uh, therefore the number of such nucleons will be depending upon the surface area. And the surface area of the nucleus is given by for a given radius is four pi r square and r is r naught times a to the power one over three and therefore this is the 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 surface area so we can say safely that the number of nucleons with the fewer than the maximum bonds are proportional to a to the power two by three uh, rather than a and this is a reduction term it reduces the total binding energy the original term um, so it has a minus sign so we we can see that this uh, surface term is uh, with the negative sign a2 times a to the power 2 by 3 and this is the second term so let's move to the uh, third term and it is due to the coulomb energy the coulomb term is uh, basically due to the electrostatic repulsion between protons in the nucleus. The electric repulsion between each pair of the protons uh, decreases uh, its binding energy and the Coulomb energy of the nucleus is basically equal to the work that must be done to bring together the protons from infinity to that spherical aggregate, which is nucleus. So the Coulomb energy is negative because it, uh, it is basically opposing the nuclear stability. And the, uh, the potential energy between the pair of the protons is given by minus E square divided by four pi epsilon naught times R, where R is the radius of the, of the sphere. So if there are Z number of protons in the nucleus, then there are Z uh, combination to the number of pairs uh, that uh, that will be uh, formed, and uh, we if we calculate it is z into z minus one divided by two are the number of pairs. So therefore, the Coulomb term is given by uh, a constant with a minus sign, and the minus sign shows that it opposes the nuclear stability. And z into z minus one is due to this. The number of pairs available, how many pairs are going to uh, affect, and uh, divided by a to the power one over three. And a to the power one over three is coming from this potential, which is behaving as one over r, and r is can, can be given by r naught times a to the power one over three. So the dependence on z and a is shown here, and this is the Coulomb energy term. And again, it is empirically derived. For this uh, formula, the electrostatic repulsion between the pair of the protons due to the Coulomb energy term is uh, basically given by this. And therefore, if we combine these three terms, we get the volume term, which is A1 times A, the second term, which is surface term, which is uh, with the negative sign and it is proportional to a to the power two by three. And then there is a Coulomb energy term, which is given by z into z minus one divided by a to the power one over three. And uh, these are three terms um, that we have. And if we plot the binding energy per nucleon uh, for, uh, for uh, as a function of a, then we get uh, the first term is the constant term. This is the volume term. The second term is the uh, a to the power uh, minus one over three, the surface term, and it is given by this blue uh, curve. And the Coulomb energy term is given by z into z minus one divided by a to the power four over three, and it is shown here with this uh, light blue color. And if we add all these together, we get a curve which is very, which is looking like, like the total energy, the total binding energy per nucleons, and its similarity is really remarkable.
in uh, in continuation of uh, this uh, the empirical mass uh, formula uh, we move further and uh, share with you the further ideas and one is uh, the asymmetric energy term and it is due to the imbalance between the number of protons and the neutrons that are causing the energy to be higher than it needs to be for a given number of nucleons. And this is due to the asymmetry of, uh, of these things and uh, asymmetric term accounts for the difference between the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So the larger the number of the nucleons, the smaller will be the energy spacing and hence the energy will be inversely proportional to A. However, the difference uh, Z uh, and A difference will be important. And therefore, this term will be proportional to A minus uh, 2Z or N minus Z. If N is equal to Z, then this term will disappear. There will be no asymmetry left. The negative sign stands for the fact that this is basically uh, this has to be subtracted because uh, this uh, energy is causing uh, the 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 opposition as compared to the attractive uh, force which keeps on binding the 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 nucleus then we move to the pairing term and it is uh, basically the pairing energy is again a correction term and it comes from the tendency of protons to pair and the neutrons to pair. And uh, it happens because of the different overlap of the functions of the pair of the nucleons in various energy states. So if the number of protons and the number of neutrons both are even, uh, the pairing energy is positive and added. And if uh, we we see them, uh, the both are uh, odd, then the same term will be subtracted. We do nothing if the one is odd and the other is even. So the pairing energy terms goes as in inversely proportional to, to A to the power 3 by 4. And uh, therefore, there are these three conditions. If, if the uh, pairing is even, even, then uh, it is proportional to A to the power uh, minus 3 by 4. And if it is odd, then it is with the negative sign, uh, the same thing. And if it is even odd or odd, even, then it is equal to zero. So the liquid drop model uh, in collecting all these terms of uh, Bede Weizsäcker's uh, semi-empirical formula, we have the first volume term, then the surface term, then the Coulomb uh, effect, and then we have the correction due to uh, the asymmetry, and then we have the pairing. And all together, uh, uh, this it gives the binding energy formula. And the 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 A volume, A uh, surface, the A coulomb, and the other A's are given by these values, and these have been calculated. The individual terms have been uh, determined using the empirical uh, relations. Now let's uh, briefly go through one example, and uh, this is example of the atomic mass uh, of uh, Zn isotope, uh, which has uh, 30 uh, protons and uh, 34 uh, neutrons. And its atomic mass is given by 63.929 atomic mass units. We have to compare the binding energy of the nuclear uh, composition and predict uh, through the help of uh, SEMF, the semi-empirical uh, formula. The binding energy is basically Z times the mass of the proton plus the N times the mass of the neutron minus the, uh, the mass which is available for the isotope and multiply this with 931.5 to convert it into the million electron volts for, for each atomic mass unit. And when we substitute this and simplify, we get 559.1 MeV as the binding energy. 
Binding energy per nucleon is the value if we divide this with the 64, uh, we, will, we will get the binding energy per nucleon. Now use the semi-empirical uh, formula and we reach at uh, the binding energy with the help of AV, AS, AC, and the other terms and put the mass number A equal to 64, atomic number Z equal to 30, we find out that the binding energy is 561.7 MeV. And the difference between the two is less than 0.5%. Again, plus sign in the pairing energy term has been used because uh, uh, Zn is an even, even nucleus. And you can see this, 30 protons and 34 neutrons, even, even nucleus, and therefore the addition has been done. And we find the difference between the empirical formula and the actual uh, relationship. The difference is very, very small. It is 0.5%. Decode drop model has uh, advantages. It can predict atomic masses and binding energies of various nuclei to high accuracy. It can predict the emission of alpha particles and the beta particles in the radioactivity. Theory of the compound nucleus, which is based on this model, is capable of explaining the basic features of the nuclear fission process. And we are going to discuss this in coming lectures. So these are really the great achievements of the liquid drop model there in which we consider the nucleus to be just like a liquid drop, which is bounded by the surface tension. And here it is bounded by the strong attractive nuclear force. The failures of this model are following. It does not explain the extraordinary stability of certain nuclei which have sharp peaks in the binding energy curve, and they are called the magic, magic nuclei, where the number of protons and the number of neutrons are 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, and so on. It also fails to explain how the mired magnetic moments of many uh, nuclei happens. It does not explain the spin in the parity. The, that the nucleus has spin and nucleus has parity, it does not explain. It is not successful in explaining the excited states of the most of the nuclei because a liquid drop is a liquid drop. It does not have the excited states from where we can study the effects and the radiation emission. So keeping in view, the liquid drop model, although is very, very fancy model, and it is really great to interpret the binding energy, the alpha and beta decay, and also the fission reaction and the theory of the compound nucleus, but it is not really uh, the, the complete model. So we have to go further and find out the other possibilities uh, of the nuclear uh, models. And in our, our coming lecture, I shall talk about uh, the uh, other the, the nuclear models, including the shell model. And thereby, I will talk about the prediction of nuclear spin and then nuclear uh, uh, parity with the help of uh, shell model. Then I will also discuss very briefly the exchange field particle model or uh, well-known Zhukawa's uh, model uh, for the nucleus. And also the new way of understanding the forces. Uh, because Zhukawa introduced new concepts uh, that the interactions, not forces, but the interactions are the most important uh, uh, part of physics. And interactions can be understood in exchange fields and the particles, um, we need a further new model. And uh, 
that is the uh, discussion point for the next lecture. Here we stop. Thank you so much.